Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. Now today I originally planned to do a little review on this 4-bay drive cage from IC Dock, but I think I'm going to have to put this off till tomorrow and then maybe on Monday we will have Software Monday instead of Software Sunday, but I do definitely want to take a look at this thing this week uh, because I told IC Dock that I would take a look at this this weekend and I'm also really excited to check it out because it looks like a really neat product. But I did hit actually a lot of garage sales today and unfortunately I didn't find any computers, uh, but I did find this. This is a Smart Power Systems UPS, and I picked this up for two bucks. Unfortunately, just booked it in, tried to test it out, and it is not functional. Well, the UPS section isn't functional anyway. It seems like this little module right here providing some sort of surge protection, and if I hook a light up to that, yes, that does work. As you can see, the light is uh, turning on with no problem while plugged into that section of the UPS, but if I unplug it, and I plug it into the back of uh, the UPS right here where I believe the inverter is actually housed, and I'll go ahead and turn it on. Actually, it was already on. Uh, we get nothing. So, want to take a closer look at this today. Want to see if I can get it back up and running. I'm probably going to have to replace the batteries. I'm sure they're bad uh, at this point. I really wish my variable voltage power supply was up and working right now because it would really come in handy today. Uh, but I'm going to have to jerry-rig something to uh, test this out. So, I'm going to tear this apart first and we will take a look inside and then I'll worry about a general troubleshooting later. So let's go ahead. I'll give you guys a quick look around this and then we will take it apart. Cosmetically, this thing is in pretty good condition actually. On the top, you can see the only major damage to the outside of the case. There is a crack going along the top right here. It stops about right here. Uh, and that's really about it as far as damage goes. If we take a look around the case, you can see a couple of scratches and scrapes, but no uh, really physical trauma. Nothing too bad. On the back, you can see all of the uh, ports and plugs. And I have that light plugged in right here. Let me go ahead and try to take that out. Oh, you know, that's stuck in there pretty well. I'm definitely going to need two hands to remove that. Uh, taking a look on the other side, same story, nothing too bad. Looking at the back, it looks good. Mm, it might be kind of interesting trying to pull this thing apart, which I'm going to do right now. Don't want to uh, stay too long in this. You can see the power button right here and the power light, which isn't coming on. Uh, the first thing that we should probably do, though, is, you know, I just noticed this. There's actually a fuse on the back. So the first thing we need to do is remove this fuse, test it. And if that's bad, then we go to step two, which is completely disassembling this thing. Now there's something that I'm pondering because I've never really worked on a UPS before, but if the batteries had actually died in this system, they probably are dead, but shouldn't power still be coming out from the back of the unit while the mains is still on in that case? I mean, the batteries being dead should only really affect the function of the unit if the power goes out because if the batteries are dead, it's not going to have any juice and it's not going to give you any power uh, out from the inverter. So, I mean, I think there's something else wrong with this unit and... If the fuse is not blown in this thing, which I'm removing right now, then uh, we might have larger problems on our hands. So taking it out now, that actually looks okay visually. Let me go ahead and break out my multimeter and we will uh, run a continuity test real quick. I'm really hoping that the fuse has actually blown uh, because that makes things a lot easier. All I had to do is replace the fuse in that case, but nope. That beep indicates that it is perfectly fine. So, yep, I'm gonna have to tear the rest of this thing down. Great. All right, so I have no clue how I'm going to tackle this. I'm, You know what? There might actually be some more screws in here that I missed before. There's uh, these deep holes right here, and if I shine a flashlight down them, hopefully I can see a uh, Phillips head screw in there. So let me grab a flashlight and check. Yep, there are some Phillips head screws in there, four of them to be exact. So let's go ahead and remove those four, plus the one on the front and the one in the middle, and see if this thing comes apart. I had to grab another screwdriver because those screws are all the way down there. I didn't think I would have one that was long enough, but thankfully I somehow found one that was. And oh, they're not too tight in there, so it shouldn't be too hard to get this thing completely apart. Hopefully it'll only take a few minutes. So I'm not sure what this screw right here in the middle is doing, but it seems like the unit is coming apart anyway without removing it because it won't come out for some reason. So I'm gonna try to pull the front faceplate off first. There we go. Flip it over. And uh, before I crack this open, let me bring you guys closer to the unit. 
Visually, everything looks fine on this board. There are no blown capacitors, no burn marks that would indicate some sort of dramatic failure. There are two 40 amp fuses right down here. I tested both of those out and they were A-OK. -okay. The transformer looks fine as well. So what I'm gonna do now before I pull this whole board out is test my theory. I went ahead and just decided to hook everything up with the unit plugged into the main so I have the power supply hooked up right now acting as the uh, kind of dummy battery is set to 13.7 volts and the unit is powered on and functional as indicated by this green light. I'm kind of hesitant to plug anything into it while uh, having the power supply plugged in. I'm not sure what kind of effects that would have. I might get that go in uh, just a second. Yeah, but it's weird to me that the fact that the battery needs to be functional uh, for the unit to work while plugged into the mains is actually a factor. Um, I didn't expect that. Well, I, I guess I learned something today. That's interesting. So yeah, appears the unit is functional, just needs a fully charged uh, battery or a new battery in this case. I think this one is definitely dead. Um, so yeah, those are like 10, 15 bucks on Amazon. I'll probably just order one of those, get it in two days and, uh, you know, install it in here. Yeah, what the heck, I just decided to uh, hook up a load. I have a 50 watt halogen bulb inside that lamp right there. And with the dummy battery hooked up, it seems like the unit is 100% functional. Of course, if we cut it off or unplugged it from the mains, uh, it would just cut off at this point because that power supply is not providing anywhere close to enough power to power that uh, halogen lamp or the inverter circuit itself. Um, but yeah, it seems like it's definitely gonna be worth buying a new battery for this uh, little UPS. Okay, so here's something really interesting. I went ahead and unplugged the power supply from the unit and it's still functioning just fine while plugged into the main. So it doesn't actually need to have a battery hooked up to function. It just needs to detect that there is one there before starting up and that it is in good health. Uh, that's a really weird feature. I mean, I kind of feel like it's one of those greedy manufacturing things where they only want it to last for two years. So uh, once the battery, you know, starts to die out, they actually just have the whole thing cut out. It, it also could be that they're trying to give you a hint that the battery is dead, so they just have the whole unit cut out to as a sign to uh, replace the battery in the unit. But I don't know, I just find that, that design aspect kind of weird. I, I just think that's really odd. So with that in mind, I guess my initial assumption that you don't need a good battery in the unit for it to actually function while plugged into the mains was correct. It's just uh, a really odd feature. Another interesting thing, if I power it off and power it back on, it will actually come back on. So off, light turns off, power it back on, the light should come back on. So power is still flowing through the unit, but I bet if I unplug this thing, uh, which would erase everything from memory, that it wouldn't turn back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and test that out. I'm gonna turn the unit off, unplug it, and uh, see what happens when I try to plug it back in. Okay, so the unit is off. Let's turn back on and let's try to give it some power. Yup, absolutely nothing. I can't get this battery to hold a charge. It is cooked, so I'm gonna go ahead and order a new one off Amazon. Found this one right here for 15 bucks and this is the one I am about to buy right after the video is over. So 15 bucks plus the two bucks for the uh, UPS itself. Hey, not a bad buy overall. I really needed a uh, UPS for my server in the back over there and the door's closed, so you can't even see it. Uh, but yeah, plan to use it for my server. Really excited to get this back up and running and I will probably make a, a really short video later on when I have everything uh, properly working again. Now, someone just sent me a message and they asked me if I could do a uh, $100 uh, PC build and I thought that was interesting. So I went on Amazon, looked up a couple parts and it turns out I could actually build a brand new PC for around a hundred bucks. So, huh, I'm, I'm thinking about that and I might actually make that a video. It depends on how much money I have uh, in the budget over this summer, but I think that would be a really fun, really neat video to actually do. It's not gonna be a gaming PC or anything, just something for like everyday office tasks, maybe, uh, you know, streaming some 1080p video too, but eh, I'm really thinking about that. That might be a really neat video. All right guys, so that's going to be about it for this video. Just ordered that lead acid battery off Amazon. It should be getting here on Thursday along with the capacitors I ordered for my primary power supply. Really wish the primary 
primary su power supply was up and running for this video so I could have actually made sure the inverter was uh, properly functioning. I would have hooked up the power supply and put a small load on it like a phone charger or something like that just to verify that it is 100% functional. But just by looking at it, I think it's fine. Uh, and we were trying to switch it on earlier and it was trying to come on uh, with my tiny little Elenco power supply. So I'm pretty sure that works. If it doesn't, hey, yeah, I get a little bit more uh, time to play around with this. So I will give you guys a little update uh, in one of my uh, upcoming videos if I get this thing back up and running. Probably not going to make a full video out of it just because there's not really enough content there. Uh, it's going to be a little electronic repair day since I also had to put the uh, power supply back together. So once again, that's going to be about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's getting late, guys, and starting to lose it as far as... Uh, Speaking goes, yeah, I just had to make a cut there because uh, I lost it there. <laughs> so you know how to support me. You can uh, use my Amazon and eBay affiliate links, both of which will be in the description. Don't forget to check out my Patreon. Don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. And of course, do not forget to check out my website. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in tomorrow's installment of A Computers and Technology, where we will finally be checking out this IC Dock uh, drive cage.